And remind you, dear brothers and sisters, to have a sincere intention in your hearts by listening to the lesson, seeking reward from Allah Ta'ala. Insha'Allah, we will continue from where we stopped in our previous lesson. We were on page 16. We mentioned that the author, may Allah Ta'ala have mercy on him, he said that Allah has the perfect attributes. All the attributes of Allah show perfection. All of the attributes of Allah are attributes that befit to be attributed to Allah. You already know that the attributes of Allah have no beginning and no end. And you also already know that the attributes of Allah do not change. And you know that all the attributes of Allah do not resemble the attributes of the creation. So the author, may Allah have mercy on him, he said that Allah Ta'ala is attributed with all proper attributes of perfection. And we spoke about some of these attributes like knowledge, power, and will. And Allah Ta'ala is exalted above all what is considered imperfection if attributed to him. That means Allah is clear of any attributes that are attributes of imperfection if attributed to him, such as ignorance, powerlessness, color, boundaries, and occupying a direction and a place. And when you look at all these attributes, they are all attributes of what? Of creation. They're all attributes of creation, be it color, be it having a size, a shape, whether having being ignorant of something, being powerless. These do not befit to be attributed to the creator. And among the examples, the author, may Allah have mercy on him, that he mentioned is also, he said that do not befit to be attributed to Allah, is occupying a direction and a place because they are attributes of the creation. And we spoke in details about this matter in our previous lesson. SubhanAllah, this is really an important matter, even though it is very obvious and clear for the person who believes in the Quran, for the person who has a sound intellect, they are very clear. Unfortunately, there are still people nowadays who have a belief that contradicts this. This means they have a belief that contradicts the basics of the belief. Among the basics of the belief of Muslims is to believe that Allah is not like his creation. This means that Allah does not occupy a place because we said whatever occupies a place has a volume has a specific shape, a specific form. This means it has a boundary. This means it is created. And the, the proof is really simple to understand. This means it has a volume, so it is created. So for sure, Allah then does not occupy any place. Also, we can say that as Allah Ta'ala existed eternally, what did we say means eternally? It means without a beginning. So we can say as Allah Ta'ala existed eternally without a place, after creating places, God does not change. For Allah does not change. And we said that whatever changes is in need. And whoever is in need is not a creator. Whoever changes is in need of the one who specified him with that change. And whoever is in need is not the creator, is not the Lord. So we can also then state this as proof that Allah Ta'ala does not change. He existed eternally without a place. And there was no place. Place is created. So after creating place, God does not change. He exists without a place as he did before creating all places, be it the skies, earth, the harsh, God does not need any of them. 
And we also said another proof is also that whatever occupies a place, it means it has a volume. It means it is created. And it does not befit to attribute Allah with an attribute of the creation. Allah does not have a volume. Allah is not like his creation at all. So then among the fundamentals of the belief of Muslims is that Allah Ta'ala does not occupy any place or any direction. And Allah Ta'ala, his attributes are not like the attributes of the creation. Um, I'm also going to mention something to you here so that you would be aware of it. SubhanAllah, sometimes when uh, I speak to some of these people who carry a belief contrary to what we are talking about, and as we said, this is a belief that contradicts the Qur'an. So that contradicts the, the basics of the belief, the fundamentals. So if a person believed that Allah has a shape or a size, or that he is in a particular place, such as the sky, or if he says that he is on the throne, all this contradicts the Qur'an. So the person would not be Muslim. If a person had that belief, he would not be a Muslim. So among the things that some of these people who carry uh, a belief that contradicts the, the basics of the belief, the fundamentals of the belief, which is that Allah is not like his creation and that he does not occupy a place, some of them, they try to deceive the person who is not knowledgeable in the religion. And they try to tell this person, to convince this person of their misguidance, of their belief. They tell this person that above the throne, there is no place. And don't be fooled by that. Don't believe them and don't let them deceive you. As we mentioned last time, always be firm in your heart that Allah is not like his creation that Allah does not need his creation, that Allah Ta'ala does not change. Always be firm of these matters. So when they try to deceive the person and they claim that above the throne there is no place, this is not true. The throne is a place. The throne in Arabic means al-arsh. It is the ceiling of paradise. That is a place above it is a place so it is a direction it is a place above it this is a place so subhanallah they try to use different tactics different strategies in order to deceive people to make them follow their misguidance so it is really very very important that the person protects himself by learning the fundamentals of the belief always adhering to the fundamentals of the belief and knowing the proof, both the proof from the Qur'an and the intellectual proof, this helps as well. So when the person guards himself by knowing the proof from the Qur'an, knowing the intellectual proof, inshallah, he will not be fooled by their methods of deceiving people to follow their creed. The Qur'an teaches that Allah is not like his creation. Now, before I continue with the book, inshallah, among also the attributes of Allah that uh, we said there are 13 which the accountable person must know, we will be mentioning a few more today, inshallah. But you already know that all the attributes of Allah are not like the attributes of the creation. So you know now when I tell you that Allah Ta'ala is attributed with sight, you know that Allah Ta'ala sees without eyes because eyes are created. And you know and believe that Allah is not like his creation. So when I tell you that Allah Ta'ala is attributed with hearing, you know then that Allah Ta'ala hears not like we hear we hear using our ears, we hear using instruments. These are what? These are created. And Allah is not like his creation. So Allah Ta'ala sees without instruments, without the need of any instruments. And Allah Ta'ala hears 
without the need of any instruments. He does not have ears. These are created. So Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ We are on page 16. The verse means nothing resembles Allah in any way. And Allah is attributed with hearing and sight. So in this verse, what came first, what was mentioned first was لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ which means nothing resembles Allah at all. Then what is mentioned is, وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ which means, and he is attributed with hearing and sight. So this is so no one would misconstrue that the hearing and sight of Allah are like the hearing and sight of others because the verses of the Qur'an do not contradict each other. Always know that. So, when we know and we believe which means nothing resembles Allah which means and he is attributed with hearing and sight we know then for sure that Allah sees not like we see not with instruments not with pupils and that Allah Ta'ala hears not like the creation hears not with ears, and not with any other instruments. Allah Ta'ala is not like his creation. He is dissimilar to the creation, not similar to the creation. As the scholar named Dhunun al-Misri, may Allah Ta'ala raise his rank, said, what did he say? He said in Arabic, مَهْمَا تَصَوَّرْتَ بِبَالِكْ فَاللَّهُ بِخِلَافِ ذَلِكْ What does it mean? It means, Whatever you imagine in your mind, Allah is different from it. Allah is not like that. And when you think about it, you know that whatever you imagine in your mind, try not to imagine something in your mind. Whatever you imagine in your mind, it has a shape, it has a size, it has a color, it has a form. All of these are what? Created. All of these are attributes of the creation. It has a volume, it has density, it takes a specific area. All of these are attributes of the creation. Everything that we imagine in our minds is something created. So what the Nun al-Nusri, the scholar, said is actually the belief of all Muslims, which is that whatever that we imagine in our minds, Allah is not like that. So Allah Ta'ala is not imagined in the minds okay we cannot imagine allah allah is not imagined in the minds for whatever we imagine is something that is created and we know that allah is not like his creation at all so he said thus allah is eternal meaning without a beginning to his existence and everything else is originated it means everything other than Allah Ta'ala has a beginning to its existence. It exists after having not existed. Okay? So everything other than Allah Ta'ala came into existence, meaning it did not exist. Allah created it, and now it exists. So it is originated. It has a beginning to its existence. Whereas only Allah Ta'ala has no beginning to his existence. And of course, the attributes of Allah Ta'ala have no beginning as well. Allah Ta'ala is the only creator of all beings and everything else. This means the whole universe is a creation. It has a beginning to its existence. Here also, we uh, I want to draw your attention to this matter. It is important to know here that the belief of Muslims is that everything in this universe, this whole universe is created. It has a creator who is Allah Ta'ala. So it did not come into existence like that by itself. It did not create itself. Something that is created cannot create. We are created. We 
cannot create something. We cannot bring something from non-existence into existence. We cannot. We ourselves are created. So whatever is created cannot create, cannot bring something else from non-existence into existence. So this universe has a creator. Okay, know that because subhanAllah nowadays you need to protect yourselves and you need to protect your loved ones, you need to protect your children, your siblings, your family, because many people now, including unfortunately in many schools, they teach what contradicts that. They teach uh, what Darwin's theory claims. We will not go into that, but you need to be aware of that so that you teach young children that this theory is not true. This universe has a creator. It has a beginning to it. Allah created it. So the whole universe is a creation that has a beginning to its existence. So the whole universe with all its generic kinds and individual components is originated. Now, the Sheikh Rahimahullah, the author of this book that we are going over, you will notice that at times he will mention specific names or specific groups. And of course, there is wisdom behind that. There, it is important that he did that. That is because these particular groups or these specific people he mentions, they were famous at a particular time and they mentioned things that contradicted the belief. So he would be warning from them so that the person is aware of that. And this is important as now I just warned you from Darwin's theory, which many schools nowadays teach. So the scholars used to do that also in the past. They used to mention specific groups or specific names of deviant people who had beliefs that contradicted the Quran so that people would be aware of them and not follow them. Okay. So the author, may Allah have mercy on him, he mentioned here a person called Ibn Taymiyyah. This person lived many, many years ago, so he is, he is no longer alive. However, some of what he taught is still being spread nowadays, unfortunately. Even if those who teach some of his teachings do not um, mention his name, maybe. Some might mention his name, some might not. But some of his beliefs are still being taught and spread nowadays. So you should be warned about that and warn others from that as well. So in this matter that we just mentioned, in the matter that we believe that the universe is created, the universe has a beginning to its existence, all the universe with its entities are created. This is the belief of Ahlu Sunnah. But this man called Ibn Taymiyyah, he negated that, he contradicted this, and he followed some of the philosophers who claimed that as well, who also contradicted the belief of Ahlul Sunnah. What did they say? They claimed that the generic kinds of the universe are eternal. They claimed that they do not have a beginning. And this is not true, because we know that Allah Ta'ala created all the creation we know that everything that has attributes of creations is created. It has a beginning. It is originated. This person called Ibn Taymiyyah and the philosophers which he followed, they deviated from the belief of Ahlul Sunnah. They do not follow the belief of Ahlul Sunnah. And they claimed that the generic kinds of the universe are eternal, meaning they claim that they have no beginning which contradicts the belief of Muslims, because Muslims believe that all the creation has a beginning to its existence. Every creation that came into existence, whether among entities, which are things that have a volume, or deeds, whether these deeds are voluntary or involuntary, they exist by the creating of Allah Ta'ala. So there are actions 
that we do voluntarily, such as now me moving my hand. I'm doing this voluntarily. But the creator of this movement is Allah Ta'ala. I do not create this movement. If Allah Ta'ala does not create the movement, there will not be any movement. So this is also among the belief of Muslims that the creator of the voluntary and the involuntary actions is Allah Ta'ala. Voluntary, we said, as I am now doing, I'm moving my hand, this is a voluntary action. Involuntary, such as, for example, my heartbeat, this is something that is involuntary. Or sometimes when you feel uh, cold, um, you shake sometimes involuntarily, okay? Both these kinds of movements, the voluntary movements and the involuntary movements, both of them are created by Allah, okay? So Allah Ta'ala is the creator of entities and movements, voluntary movements and involuntary movements as well, okay? This is among the fundamentals of the belief that Allah Ta'ala is the only creator, that we do not create anything. Allah Ta'ala said in the Quran, Wallahu khalaqakum wa ma ta'malun. The verse means that Allah Ta'ala created us and our doings and our actions. And subhanAllah, when we think about it, this is clear. This is clear and very evident. You know that there are people who are not able to stand up, for example. They use a wheelchair. They're not able to stand up. Even though when we stand up, those of us who are able to stand up, we usually do that voluntarily, right? So it's a voluntary movement. We usually do that voluntarily. We stand up voluntarily. But this movement, we said, is created by Allah. If Allah Ta'ala does not create that movement, we, it would not happen. It would not happen. So these people who use a wheelchair because they're not able to stand up, this is clear that they do not create the movement of standing up because in reality, wouldn't they like to be able to stand up? Usually they would. Usually you and I think that they would, but they are not able. So this is proof also that they do not create the movement of standing up. We do not create any movement. Inshallah ta'ala, we will talk about a matter that is called acquiring our action which is that what we do and we are accountable for, it will come inshallah. So, the author, may Allah have mercy on him, he said, every creation that came into existence, whether among entities, which are things that have a volume or deeds, whether voluntary or involuntary, they exist by the creating of Allah. All entities from the particle, of fine dust or smaller to the grand throne, which is the largest creation, exists by the creating of Allah. A particle of fine dust is the smallest particle we can see unattached to anything else with the naked eye. It is visible when light passes through an opening. In Arabic, this is called al haba so this is the smallest particle that we can see with the naked eye. However, there is something that is smaller than that, but we do not see that with our naked eye, okay? And that the scholars call in Arabic, al-jawhar al-fard, okay? This is so small that it is no longer divisible. It's not div divisible anymore, it is so small, okay? And that al-jawhar al-fard, we cannot see it with the naked eye. But all of that is created by Allah. And the grand throne, Al-Arsh, which is the biggest creation size-wise, is also created by Allah. And we said it is the ceiling of paradise. Allah created it and Allah is not in need of it. Allah is not on Al-Arsh 
And Allah Ta'ala for sure is not attributed with sitting. SubhanAllah, some of these uh, people who um, go against the belief of Ahlul Sunnah and they resemble God to his creation, they even say about Allah that he sits. SubhanAllah, we clear Allah Ta'ala from such attributes. Whatever sits has a body, an upper part and a lower part. It means it's created. So for sure, Allah Ta'ala is not attributed with sitting. And anyways, we said that Allah Ta'ala does not occupy any place. These people, they claim, they say that Allah Ta'ala sits on the throne. This belief contradicts the Quran. It contradicts the teachings of the Prophet salam. It contradicts the consensus of all Muslim scholars. And it contradicts the sound mind. So, uh, be aware of that. So Allah Ta'ala created Al-Arsh, the throne, which is the biggest creation size-wise, and Allah Ta'ala is not in need of that. So Al-Arsh is the ceiling of paradise. The author said, along with every movement, along with the aforementioned physical beings, Allah created the outward deeds and every movement and rest. These are created as well. And the inward deeds as well. Outward deeds, these are visible to the other people usually. They see our outward deeds. But inward deeds such as what? The inward deeds such as our intentions. Okay? Allah Ta'ala is the creator of our intentions. And Allah Ta'ala knows, of course, all our thoughts and intentions. So... Allah Ta'ala is the creator of movement and rest and our outward and inward deeds and thoughts of the slaves that occur. These originated things which came into existence are all created by Allah Ta'ala. So Allah Ta'ala said in the Quran, وَخَلَقُ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ The verse means Allah created everything. Everything that comes into existence it means it is originated, it means it has a beginning, it means it's created. And Allah Ta'ala is the creator of all the creation.